all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be talking about something called include os now it's a unikernel uh, and i won't be surprised if you guys have heard this for the first time this particular word called unikernel we've heard of monolithic uh, kernels we have heard of hybrid and micro kernels but what is a unikernel so basically the idea behind a unikernel is it's not an operating system at all it's it's just one sort of bare metal code that runs but it sort of also behaves like an operating system but it's one single binary supposed to boot very fast i'm not sure where the developers are going with this uh, actually i have some idea so we'll talk about it uh run your application with zero overhead because all that is running is your application and nothing else um this is sort of aimed towards the server market um, where people would want to run their application but not have an entire VM just to run one single say HTTPS server um, Apache server something like that and then well you can run web servers on this and not have any overhead at all and it will work just fine just like an, a, like a bare metal application and they have some code examples here so it's pretty simple to work with uh, once you get everything compiled once you get the libraries and the tools tool set all compiled it's pretty easy to work with we'll take a look at a couple of examples and then take a look at how to create our own uh, unikernel based in os using include os so i won't go into whole detail of building it's pretty well documented and there's always a bit of fun uh, while doing it on your own so i am at my terminal we have a few examples here let's go to a vga one so it does have some graphics uh, graphics capability i'm not uh, of course it's, it's not going to run any games or crisis but there is a vga one and you can actually run it natively on qemo so i'm going to show that as well now here is the kind of the QEMU command line. So how it has to be x86-64 because our binary is 64-bit. But the 64-bit QEMU has some issues while dealing with some weird 64-bit kernel images. It doesn't want to work with them. Um, and then, um, so what you do, you load a 32-bit chain loader. Uh, on the QEMU as a kernel and then that boots the intrad or in it um, in a DRAM disk image uh, and executes that so that's all well and good um, and you can see VGA standard flag press enter wait and give it a second and you can see it starts to create this uh, random uh, image here the code is very simple just the math stuff there but um yeah we will do uh, something similar as well there is another interesting uh, graphics demo so this is the vjgfx library uh, the next thing i'm going to show you is the uh, vga uh, the kernel vga library which is basically uh, putting the text on the vga display uh, that's using the snake demo and if some of you have guessed this already this is the snake game so we we'll just run that uh, and yeah, you get your snake and you can play it as that so yeah so as you can see most of the characters and the sprites and everything is just uh, text nothing much And you can also see how the QEMU cursor also keeps blinking over there. Now this is isn't from the code uh, that's that's been compiled. This is the QEMU x86 output, and the cursor just keeps blinking because uh, no one uh, like it, it, it didn't get disabled or something. So that's all good, and now we can kill. Uh, there you go it gives you the score says game over you can press space to uh to go at it again 
but that's it and then uh, a lot of uh, networking based demos as i said uh, before this is where the main focus is as a very small um server side thing that just runs in the background so like, you can see a lot of tcp tls udp vlan websocket router and all of that stuff http client acon is also something similar uh so let's get into making our own code So how do you write a uh, include OS app? So it's extremely simple to do a hello world program and then you can always go away from uh, uh, forward from there. So it, you just go include uh, OS. So hence the name include OS and then you go init main and a simple printf and you write hello world so it's a simple hello world program and that's it that's all you need uh, save it compile it and again uh, you can take a look at what the compilation process is like maybe i'll do a in much more in detail video uh, about setting it all up because even on fedora and even on Ubuntu, it's kind of weird. Um, so we go into the build folder, run cmake build, wait for it. Oops. Correct your code as usual because I am really tired. Build and wait for it. Builds fine. And then run it make sure to add the app like proper binary in this case it's test it boots and then there's nothing because it's not displaying on the vga so here we have to change this to no graphic and run that and you can see it boots and says hello what there it is uh, it also gives you like a bunch of messages before it starts to boot so you can take a look at that as well so it's loaded with one module that's our module right there uh, it begins the whole boot stuff um, and I think that's the um, that's the chain loader all right so I've made some changes and here is what the code now looks like so I have also included VGA uh, and I have set all of that up. So now, as you can see, uh, it should print hello world uh, on the display. So nothing on the serial console, all on the display. So we go CD build and then just run the Canon command. Now it is a weird one. Again, I'll probably at some point do a complete video on this. But for now, uh, run CMake run CMake build wait for it and boot it and there you go so you can see it says hello world and include OS so this was kind of a quick go through uh, it's supposed to run on bare metal as well which I wouldn't really hope that anyone does because it's probably just running on a single um, address space which isn't really good especially some when it's connected to other things don't do it uh, run it on a VM in a container where it's all secure uh, and that's what the purpose at least for now seems to be uh, also doesn't really make much of a sense running it on bare metal or uh, run it on a hypervisor run multiple of these uh, and that's kind of the idea at least so um, I don't know how many people think about this particular 
idea of include OS. I've discussed it with a few more people and uh, everyone's concerned about the uh, about running on a single address space. Again, this kind of makes your X or your, your machine into um, your server into an Arduino because it's just running that one single piece of code. Again, Arduino does the same thing. It has a very small bootloader. It just loads the code from the flash memory flash or EEPROM and then uh, that is what keeps on running. So kind of the same thing that's happening here. Um, yeah, so I guess that's about it about include OS. I hope I'm going to, um, you know, do the regular stuff, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, yeah, see you all in the next one. Bye.